Welcome to our review on grouping organisms. First thing we need to understand then is what we're actually talking about when we refer to classification. So when we're going to be classifying things, what we're doing is putting them into groups. So what we generally do is observe their characteristics, find those with similar characteristics and put them in a group together. Now biologists can use one of two systems when classifying these organisms. The first one is the natural system, which is based on evolutionary links. So that means that organisms will be grouped together if they've got a common ancestor. And then the second form of a system that we could use to classify organisms is the artificial system. Now this one is based on visible features and that makes a group of organisms easier to identify. When we actually look and see how we've classified everything on Earth, then we actually come down to our first stage of classification, which are the kingdoms. Now, every living thing on Earth can be split up into one of five kingdoms, which are the plants, animals, fungi, protoctista, and the prokaryotes. If we consider the plant kingdom first of all, when we look at all of the organisms that we put into the plant kingdom, they've got certain features in common. First is that they're made out of many cells. Second, that they've got cell walls, which are made of this chemical called cellulose. Third one, that they contain chloroplasts within their cells. Next one is that they use light to make food by photosynthesis, and they grow in a spreading manner. So the examples that we find in our plant kingdom be things like flowers, mosses, grasses, and so on. The second kingdom we're gonna look at is the animal kingdom. So the features that all of the organisms within the animal kingdom have is they're made of many cells. They do not have chloroplasts present within those cells. They're unable to make their own food, so they have to feed on other organisms. They've got a compact body shape, and most are capable of moving around. And I've given you just a few examples there, fish, insects, humans, but there are obviously many, many more. The third kingdom is the fungi kingdom. Now, what we find with their features is that they do have cell walls, but they're made of this chemical called chitin. They reproduce by forming spores, and they do not photosynthesize. So three examples for you, mushrooms, toadstools, and yeast. Our next kingdom is the protoctista. Now, what we find here is that these are mostly single-celled organisms, with the exception of the large algae. So examples for you, amoeba and the algae. The final kingdom is the prokaryotes. Now, they have no nucleus. That's their key characteristic that you need to remember. And the example is bacteria. Now what we find is that even when we split them up into kingdoms, there's still a massive range of organisms present within any given kingdom. So what we do is we further divide them up into smaller groups. And what I've given you in the flowchart there is the little sequence of divisions, if you like. So we start off with our largest one at the top there, the kingdom, which has obviously the greatest number of organisms. Then we come down to the phylum, the class, the order, family, genus, and finally, the species at the bottom, and that's where we're left with just that one type of organism. So you do need to remember those different divisions. So I'd suggest what you do is come up with a little mnemonic to help you remember them in the correct sequence. If we look in a bit more detail at the animal kingdom now, then if we look at that next step down in the classification from kingdom to the phylum, then what we would find is that we've got five different phyla within the animal kingdom. So you've got the cnidarians, which are things like our jellyfish, the annelids, things like the earthworms in our gardens, arthropods, insects, mollusks like slugs and snails, and then the vertebrates, which are all the humans, the frogs, the fish, etc. Now within our animal kingdom, we've got that phyla of the arthropods, and that's actually the largest of all of the animal phyla. So if we actually look within our arthropods, then we can see, again, there's further divisions there. So we've got the myriapods, which are our millipedes and centipedes. So each of their body segment has legs, which and they've got this long segmented body. We've got the crustacea, so crabs and woodlice, 10 legs, and their body's covered in a hard outer coating. We've got our insects, like the bees and our butterflies. So six legs there, bodies divided into the three sections, and they've usually got two pairs of wings. And then the arachnids, so all our spiders and scorpions. They've got eight legs and their bodies divided up into two sections. Last thing we really need to consider is the problems associated with classification. So 
the biggest problem we've got is the fact that there are many organisms that don't neatly fit into one of our groups. So what we find is that they actually have characteristics that would place them into two different groups. And the best example is Archaeopteryx there, which is an extinct creature these days, obviously. You don't see one of those running around anymore. But you can see from the actual picture at the bottom there the fact that you can pick out there are features that come from birds and also from reptiles as well. So two different groups, but in that one organism, making it quite hard to classify.